Rub up your engines! You often hear Toyota Siennas are the best vans out there. Why? Well, I'm going to show you why with this one that has 280,000 miles on it. And the guy only paid $1,600 for it. How could that be? Well, he bought it used at 240,000 miles. Now it's got like 280,000 miles on it. But they are well made and they can hold up. He spent some money on it. He worked on it himself. He changed the power steering rack. It was leaking, suspension parts, put a timing belt on it. That's just, you know, kind of normal maintenance of a car with that kind of mileage on it. But when you consider, my son bought a new one last year for like $57,000. Hey, maybe buying an old one like this isn't such a bad idea. Now, the guy lives in Minnesota and he's already taken numerous trips to Florida and back. So obviously, it's dependable, right? Not on the highway, he gets 25 miles a gallon. Nothing to spit at for a van. Got a lot of room. Now, he bought it used and he was questioning before he bought it. He said, oh, I'm in Minnesota. It was in Minnesota. It's gonna be rusted out, but guess what? Toyota knew how to make these things even back then. Their process of paint and soaking the body and frame electrostatically, Hey, if this was a Ford or Chevy or a Ram, this would be all rotted away. It'd probably be in a junkyard, but if it was still running, there'd be holes in the floorboard. Because these vans, of course, came from the original Toyota vans. They had the engine in the middle, was a pain to work on. They'd run forever. But they cost so much money to make because the engine was in the middle. They had a drive shaft going to the front to drive the AC and the power steering pump and a water pump, and then another drive shaft to the back to drive the rear wheels. They cost too much to make. So they built this pretty much on a Camry unitized body and frame system. So everything was already proven. The engine, tranny, everything is pretty much from a Camry. And everybody knows how long Camrys last. They sold millions and millions of them, right? Of course, the big knock against Camry is they're boring cars, okay? Well, this is a van, so you don't care because all vans are boring. <laughs> but practical because my youngest son, he bought this van because he said it's the most practical thing with three kids for traveling around the country and doing stuff. But my oldest son said to him, I'm never buying a minivan. Well, three kids later, he's driving a minivan and it's a Toyota Sienna. So <laughs> be careful what you say, your words may come back and bite you. So let's look at this thing to see why they last so long. 3000 cc, four cam V6, and of course it's old school. Coil on plug here, and then just wires going to the back three. It's an earlier design, but it works perfectly fine. And a very reliable automatic transmission made by Toyota, their Asian transmissions. They are well designed, they last a long time. Now this particular one, it's old, because it's 2000, so it's got a timing belt. You're supposed to change it every 100,000 miles, okay? It's a non-interference engine. If you don't, it doesn't hurt anything, it just breaks the belt and then you gotta replace it. So, unlike, say, the 330s had interference engines, you have to change the belt. If you don't, pistons hit valves, bend things, you'll have real expensive problems. This one isn't, and truth be told, I had a customer in Houston with one of these with 400,000 miles. And you know how many times he changed the timing belt? None, and it was still running. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of these guys want to make money selling you a timing belt. And theoretically, yeah, you're supposed to change them, but these are so well made. If they don't get oil leaks and oil doesn't get on the belt, they can last that long. I've seen it with my own eyes. Let's start this one up, see what it sounds like. Okay, it's a Toyota, it starts right up. Does it make horrible clacking noises? No. Does it shake? No. 23 years old and it's pushing 300,000 miles. One of the reasons they last so long, they're well built. And in the case of this one, look on the old door sticker, turn it upside down. This one was made in Kentucky. That way. <laughs> I had a Toyota Camry station wagon, was built in Kentucky. We drove it, gave it to my oldest son. He drove the heck out of it. He gave it to my youngest son. He drove the heck out of it. Then we sold it to a girl who joined the Peace Corps and she drove it away. I suppose it's still going down the road somewhere. And they did a decent job putting them together. Yeah, they still do. Now, I do have to say I'm more prone to buy a Japanese one. It fits a little better. Sometimes the paint holds up a lot longer than the ones done in the United States. But in terms of driving, hey, you can't complain against how long this thing has lasted, how reliable it's been. I mean, he only paid 1600 bucks for it and he's been back to Florida for a bunch of times. You know, paid for plane tickets a few times. And what do you got left? A ticket stub. 
He's still got the van, you know? Now these things being front wheel drive, of course, handle much better than the old Toyota vans that were rear wheel drive. And these guys are from Minnesota, and I just asked them, do you have any problems driving in Minnesota? No. I said, you put snow tires on it? They said, no. So all these clowns that are buying four wheel drive vehicles, spending all this money, you don't need it most of the time. It is overkill. Plus, and you gotta buy four snow tires and blah, blah, blah. You don't need all that technology a lot of times. It's overkill. You pay for it, you get worse gas mileage. It doesn't make sense for most people. So why buy something you don't need? Now, just for kicks, look up a scan tool. See what kind of shape this thing is? Pushing 300,000 miles. Besides, it's warm inside here. The heater still works and it's snowing. Now, this is a new X-Tool scan tool I'm trying out. They're like 170 bucks. I like their other scan tools. They're really good. This particular one is a IP508. Other ones are 300, 500, 700 something dollars for their top line, which work quite well. But this is only 170 bucks, so I want to see how this one works. Well, this is an old car. I kind of doubt it's going to do an auto scan, but we'll try the auto scan. And these older Toyotas, the system they use generally will not auto scan. While we're waiting, we can see the cloth seats are still in good shape. Look at all the room in the back. This thing actually, for as old as this, this model, just really clean inside. It's got some basic mode stuff here and the cruise control. Nothing fancy because, hey, it's a 2000. As I suspected, it's not going to do auto scan on this old one so we'll go back and we'll just go to asian they're not alphabetical toyota there we go toyota communicating it's gonna be relatively slow an old car like this here we have sienna 2000 and we'll do an automatic scan here we go there's no code so we'll go to diagnosis start her up and we'll do live data now this is an old car and you know, it got limited data but for an old car this particular scanner it does 89 points of data and that's not bad so we'll start looking now the long-term fuel trim it's subtracting five and a half percent means it's running a little bit rich nothing outrageous it's an old car the injectors probably dribble a little and he's still getting 25 miles a gallon on the highway so it's nothing to worry about you can see the ignition advance is stable 14 and a half and it even shows the automatic transmission fluid temperature on this old thing not a bad scan tool for this price point misfires zero zero no misfires and sensor tests have been completed and passed and you can see the oxygen sensors are going lean to rich 131 milliseconds 65 now they're following each other which is what you want they're both following each other and the other one's 65 too so hey even those old things are still working just some transmission data limited but some from this old car so this is in good shape and the scan tool itself i'm going to check it out in the future on more advanced cars to see how it works with more modern cars it did a lot more than a cheap scan tool will on this one 89 points of data but i want to check it out on a more modern car to see how it does on those just time it's snowing so we'll turn on the wipers and back up old car no backup camera so we gotta look at the mirror now of course it's a van so it's somewhat high up there. You get a nice view, not outrageous, but look, it's still pretty smooth. Now, a lot of times these vans turn to rattle traps. Hey, this one's not rattling. Pretty quiet, actually. I don't hear bearing noise, considering it's got almost 300,000 miles on it. Hey, bearings are still rolling along, not making any noise. And it handles okay. I mean, it is a Toyota Sienna van from the year 2000. It is not a race car. It's got an engine that'll go fast enough, but no, it's not the greatest handling thing in the world, to say the least. It's fine for driving around. You don't get in these things and race people. And due to its size, you get a feeling of security. You're in a relatively big vehicle. You got a lot of space inside, but you're not riding around in some tiny little car where you're worried when the big trucks come by. And we got to our little drag strip here. Nobody's behind us, we'll come to a stop. And here we go. Hey, this thing still goes. It's, it's not a tire burner, but plenty of passing acceleration. Smooth shifting for a $1,600 van. Boy, you can't go wrong. It did replace the steering rack because it was leaking and gooey and stuff. Did a good job too. I mean, this thing's tracking straight. Look, no problems at all. But one of the reasons he had to replace the steering rack is because the original owners never did anything to it, obviously, because when he drained it out, it was all black as can be. It's supposed to be red, right? It was black as can be. If the guys would have changed it a few times, the rack would still be fine. So please, when you got power steering systems in your car, hey, change the fluid out. You know, once in a while, maybe every three to five years or something like that, it isn't that common. This has 300,000 miles. Probably if they would have changed it every 100,000 miles, it wouldn't have eaten the rack up because dirty fluid, of course, 
has dirt in it. The dirt cuts the seals, then it leaks. And that's why he had to replace it, because it was leaking all over the place. If you change your fluid every once in a while in power steering, it won't eat it up. Clean fluid does not destroy the seals. And realize, the pressure of those sinks can be 1,700 pounds per square inch. So, a little dirt at that pressure turns into cutting fluid and it will eat the seals up. Take an automatic transmission. I mean, those things maybe have 45 PSI pressure on them, not 1,700. So, it's a big deal every once in a while to change your power steering. Of course, if you have a more modern car, hey, forget that. They got electric power steering. They don't have fluid in them anymore. So, you don't have to worry. In a lot of the new cars, they have electronic steering, which, of course, have its own problem when those motors break. And they do. They cost a fortune to replace. Around the corner we go. Handles perfectly fine. What a deal for $1,600. Yeah, most people would say, he gambled buying that thing. It's got 240,000 miles on it. But it's a Toyota Sienna van. And they can go a lot longer than that. And really, 1600 bucks these days? What are you going to get? I mean, a brand new Sienna van, they're like $57,000. So, for $1,600, I'd say, that guy got a pretty good deal. We come to a stop on the school bus. Does this thing shake? No, it's smooth as silk even with all that mileage on it. Now, I do have to say, the boys in Kentucky did a good job putting this thing together. It was put together in Kentucky, and it's still holding up quite well. A $1,600 Sienna van that's going back and forth to Florida from Minnesota many times still gets good gas mileage. That's why people buy them. They can last so long. A few years back, people were all saying, death of the minivan. Nah, nobody wants to buy minivans. I hate to tell these people who talk about cars, who know nothing about it, which is basically just about every auto journalist out there. They get paid by the companies to say things, right? Unlike me, who just tells you the truth about stuff. I thought, that's stupid. There's so many people with kids that have something like this. So many older people that travel that want to bring a lot of crap in the back. Or they got dogs, and they want to carry their dogs where they go, you know? People will continue to buy vans. They're convenient for people. And since these are so well made, hey, if you can find one like this for that kind of money, hey, snap it up, you know? <laughs> hey, even if you decide, well, I don't need that, you can sell it to somebody else at a profit. If you get it cheap enough, these things are well made. They can last. You gotta do a little maintenance when they get old like he did. But like I said, that steering rack only needed changing because it was all dirty because no one ever changed the fluid in it for almost 300,000 miles. If you change the fluid, that won't happen. And let's face it, minivans are minivans. They all look pretty much the same other than the plastic on the outside and how many cup holders they have in them. And these definitely outlast all of them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.